What is up guys, my name is Ignans, welcome back to the channel. A while back we looked into ASML holding, the course symbol ASML, and we found that there could be some opportunity buying into it at similar levels. Now it seems that the price is even better, as the stock is down for 26% on the year to date, and if we go back even further, the stock is now trading at the same price we had back in February of 2021. But today I want to bring up another name so we have something to compare. It is another semiconductor equipment manufacturing company that is second largest from the industry. And that name is Applied Materials, sticker symbol AMAT. The stock is now trading at $112.78, down 28.81% on the year to date. In one year it was a bit better with the stock going lower for 17.08%, but the last 5 years were quite decent, where the shares went from around $40 in 2017 to $112 now up 180.35%. The recent slowdown in price means that we now have a decent price earnings at 15.84 and the company does pay a dividend which now comes in at an annual yield of 0.91%. So to look into the stock deeper, first we'll check financials and fundamental ratios, then where analysts think the stock will be trading in one year, after that what super investors and insiders are doing with the name, and lastly we'll check the technicals of the price chart. I hope that this will be an interesting ticker to look into, so let's start. So first we have revenue, and this is applied materials history of the last 5 years. Back in 2017 they were bringing in 11.85 billion US dollars on the trailing 12 months, then with 2018 that increased to 15.63 billion, a bit of a slowdown in 2019 with 16.25 billion dollars, then in 2020 still a bit lower at 15.02 billion, but after that revenue started accelerating up, where in the beginning of 2021 it was at 18.2 billion dollars, and now with the latest quarter in we are at 24.17 billion dollars. So there was this slump in 2019, where the year-over-year -year quarterly revenue went lower for 22.7%, bottoming at $3.5 billion for the quarter, but then it started slowly moving up, accelerating in 2020, and they are now making two times that revenue in a quarter, with over $6 billion in. Next metric I want to check is price earnings. So back in 2017 it was at 16.54, then in a year with the price moving a bit higher, PE increased to 18.43. For 2019 as earnings per share kept going sideways, price earnings bottomed at 10.4, then 2020 shares went up again, so price earnings higher to 18.78 and it topped with the first quarter of 2021, where the price went higher before earnings did, so we saw the highest price earnings at 27.51. But then with the price moving sideways, and earnings consistently still moving up, price earnings dropped to 19.21, and this year with the price moving lower, we now have price earnings at that reasonable 15.71. So there was one time in 2018 and 19 where the P ratio was just at over 10, but other than that we now have the price earnings at the levels it was back in 2020 and 2017. Now let's check the shares outstanding. So in 2017 they had it at 1.089 billion shares, in 2018 it decreased to 1.071 billion, down 1.65% year over year, but after that buyback started to accelerate. In 2019 we already had it at under 1 billion, 965 million shares outstanding, lower for 9.9% year over year, then in 2020 it was at 0.927 billion shares, 3.94% down. It was going sideways to 2021, with 925 million shares there, and it seems that we had one small increase in 2021, where the shares went up to 927 million, higher for 0.43% year over year. But now with the latest quarter in, there is another decrease, where the shares outstanding is now at 897 million, and it is a decent decrease for 3.03%. So there was a bit of a slowdown in buybacks where the price was surging, but it looks like now they are back to reducing on their shares. So in 5 years Applied Materials bought back around 192 million shares, which at the current price of $113 would be a buyback valued of over $22 billion, around one-fifth of what the company is worth right now. 
The next metric I want to check is the dividend yield. So back in 2017 it was at 0.89%, then in 2018 with the price moving sideways and the payout increasing to 47 cents, we had the yield at 0.99%, then in 2019 with the price moving a bit lower and the dividend payout doubling to 78 cents, the yield shot up to 1.99%, after that the payout was consistently increased but the price also moved up, so in 2020 we had the yield at 1.49%, then the price surged before 2021 with the dividend yield dropping to 0.66% but as we saw the payout increasing and the price going lower this year the dividend yield did increase a bit where we now have it at 0.85% so we can find that they have consistently been increasing on the dividend payout but starting with 2018 the dividend yield was also continuously going lower to further check into it we will open my dividend investing watch list so we are in the watch list and this is the tab for applied materials we have the same dividend yield information of the last five years and we can find that on average in five years the dividend yield was at 1.15% so back in 2017 with a dividend at 0.69%, it was 40.12% under the 5 year average. Then as the payout was drastically increased in 2018, the yield surged to 1.98%, 71.82% over average, and it topped in 2019 at 2.4%, 77.02% over the 5 year average. But then with the price surging in 2020, the yield went close to the average at 1.14%, 1.14% percent under average and then the bottom was in 2021 where we saw the dividend yield at 0.63 percent which is 45.33 percent under average but now with the price going a bit lower the dividend yield did increase to 0.87 percent which is still quite there under the average for 24.5 percent so not the best time to get in at least for this dividend yield percentage now if you would be interested in doing a similar analysis for yourself, you are able to access this Google Sheets watchlist by following the second link at the top of the description. Otherwise suggest a ticker in the comment below and I might use that for my next analysis. So we did look into the history but how about expectations? Where do analysts think the stock will be trading next year? Here we have potential price targets from 33 analysts. The predictions range from the lows of 119 to the highest of $205 per share. The average out of it is $165.72 and currently the stock is trading at $113.83. This means that on average analysts predict that for next year the stock should be going up for 4 to 5.6%. Now let's take another angle. So out of 29 analysts on average they predict that next year applied materials will be bringing $9.29 per share in earnings. If we assume that price earnings remains the same, then we can calculate that out of this estimation next year the price should go up by 14.7%. So analysts are quite bullish predicting growth for applied materials for 2023, with the stock moving up from 15 to over 40%. Now let's take a look into super investors. It seems that currently 4 funds are holding AMAT, 2 increased on theirs or started a new position, there was 1 reduction, and 1 fund kept on holding. So the largest addition was from Avery Capital, where they added 2.18% on their position, and are currently holding over 817,000 shares, which makes 1.55% of their portfolio. But there is this Tarei fund that started a new position, with over 69,000 shares, and that makes almost 3% of their whole portfolio. Unfortunately, there was one reduction from Cantillion Capital Management, where they reduced their position with 6.89%, and that was quite a decent reduction, because they now continue to hold over 3.4 million shares. So overall, we do have more funds buying than selling, but unfortunately, the one that did sell is in fact a large holder of the stock. Now let's also check on insiders. So it seems that there was no buying pressure, as in the last 6 months insiders did zero long trades, but they did manage to sell for 3 times, with that totaling at 4 to 5.8 million dollars. So it seems that insiders also managed to reduce on their positions. Now the last part I do want to check is the chart. So the stock topped in January of this year, 
going to the highest of $167.06 per share. But after that it quickly started stumbling down. On the 19th we had it under the 100 day moving average, closing at $143, and on the 20th reaching the 200 day moving average, with a closing price of $139.15. But that support didn't hold as the price stumbled under, and the stock kept moving sideways for the next month. Then on March 1st we had the 50 day moving average crossing the 101 to the lower side, then crossing the 201 on the 11th, and the 300 day moving average on the 29th. The third cross took out the previous bottom for the year, with the price going from the highs of $142 under the 120 support to the lows of $112.34. Now the price is still trading at those similar levels, but unfortunately we will be getting two more moving average crossovers. The 100 day moving average is now going under the 200 one, and that will be repeated with it going under the 300 day moving average. But at least we do see some strength in the MACD, where the 12 day moving average will be crossing the 26th one to the upper side soon, and that could send the stock a bit higher, maybe closer to that resistance of the 200 day moving average. So we went through all the steps and now let's do a quick recap. Revenues overall has increased for the last 5 years, and they did that consistently from 2020. Price to earnings looks to be fairly valued, similar to what we saw at the dips of 2020 and 2017. The company is consistently buying back shares, and in the last 5 years they bought almost 200 million shares, which at the current price makes up of around one fifth of the market cap. Now they have been increasing on their dividend payouts, but unfortunately the increase in price was higher, as the dividend yield is now 24.5% under the 5 year average. Though analysts are really bullish, and they predict that for next year the stock will go higher in the range from 14.7 to 45.6%. But super investors overall are selling more stock than buying, and in the last 6 months insiders have only been selling. After looking into the chart we found that the 100 day moving average will be crossing lower soon, and we also had the 200 day moving average as a proven resistance. But there is some bullishness with the MACD, as the 12 day moving average will be crossing the 26th one, and that could push the stock just a bit higher than it is now. So that was it, make sure to support the channel and leave a thumbs up under the video. What do you think is applied materials a worthy pick right now? Share your stance on the name and your holdings in it in a comment below. If you would be interested in getting access to my Google Sheets documents then consider memberships. By becoming a member you will get access to Discord, where I share all my watch lists and all the buys and sells exactly when I do them. This could be a great option to track my moves closely. Last week I did an analysis on another company, so if you would be interested in that then click on a video that is currently on the screen. And that was it from my side, thank you for watching and I will be seeing you all in the next one.